I am Ryan Ellis, a senior solutions engineer at Snowflake. Today, I'm going to walk you through creating a Gen AI-based equipment maintenance solution. We're going to use Snowflake Cortex, Streamlit, and other native LLMs inside of your Snowflake system. Let's get started. Welcome to Getting Started with Snowflake. Today, we're going to build a RAG-based equipment maintenance solution uh, powered by Snowflake's Cortex and large language models. So to start, we're going to go to quickstarts.snowflake.com. You'll see what I have in this window to my left. And we're going to search for RAG. That'll bring up the three RAG-based solutions we have. And this is the one we're interested in today. Build a RAG-based equipment maintenance app using Snowflake Cortex. So we're going to go ahead and click into that. So today you're going to learn about um, LLMs, which are powered by Snowflake Cortex. You're going to learn how to use Snowpark for some data engineering. You're going to learn how to vectorize your data sets. And you're going to learn how to create a streamlit app for easy viewing of the solution that you've created. And so we're going to do all of those things here today in Snowflake. The image that I want to spend a little bit of time on here is these are the LLMs or large language models that are available today in Snowflake and their respective scoring. So you'll notice everything in blue is available for you today in Snowflake. We are going to have a little bit of vocabulary today. So LLM stands for large language model. So I'll refer to large language models as LLM further on in this video. RAG, which is retrieval augmented generation. Vector, which is the numerical representation of text. A UDF, user defined function. And a UDTF, which is a user defined table function. All right, let's get started. So we've now clicked on set up environment and now we're gonna set up our environment. So you'll notice I have a bunch of SQL commands over here on my left. I'm going to run them over here. So I want to be using account admin. I also want to create or replace a warehouse medium. And the auto suspend set to 300 just means after five minutes of non-use, I'd like it to go to sleep. I'm not going to run this command because I've already got this database in my system, but I will create the schema rag. I'm then going to tell the system to use that new database and that new schema. And then I'm gonna create the stage. So a stage is somewhere that we can upload things to in Snowflake. In my accounts in the instance, I have an Amazon account uh, deployment of Snowflake. So I just created a very small section of S3 bucket for these repair manuals. And you can see what's inside of them with the list command. Obviously, since I just created it, there's nothing there. We come back over here to the quick start, you'll notice that there's some roles that you have to grant access to call the LLMs. Um, I've already done that, so I've run these commands, but now let's go ahead and click on getting started. Now we're moved on to our getting started section. You can clone the GitHub repository, but you don't have to. You can always just browse to it and then download these manuals. I've already downloaded these manuals. I have them on my desktop. Then we're going to go and we're going to browse um, via the databases tab to go to the schema that we just created. And then we're going to upload those into the repair manual stage. So if I come over here back to my Snowflake account and I click on databases, I can now see all the databases in my system. So I'm going to click on LLM, RAG, stages. Here's my repair manual stage. We talked about that. I'm going to click add files, browse. And then if I go to my desktop, Here's all of the manuals, and I'm going to upload them. It'll take just a minute, but you can see that all four files are now uploaded, and I can see them in my stage. So let's go validate that. Using the list command again. I'm in the wrong schema. Perfect. I can now see all the repair manuals that I just uploaded. On to the data engineering section. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a Python UDF, again, user defined function to read in those um, repair manuals that we just uploaded. So let's go ahead and execute that code. You'll notice that I'm using the Snow Park Python package as well as the PyPDF2 package. Those two together are going to give me the ability to read in those PDF files. If I keep following my quick start over here on the left, I need to create a table to store those manuals into. So let's go ahead and create table, repair manuals. You'll 
you'll notice I'm calling that Python UDF that we just created. So what this command is doing is it's creating that table and it's going out to those files, selecting them into that table. So let's go ahead and validate that. There they are. I have the names and then the contents that you can see over here. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to break those into pieces, right? Because in a repair manual in its whole is too big for context windows. Context windows and LLMs are the amount of words or tokens that they can handle. So let's go ahead and break that up. So first I need to set the chunk size to be 3000. I would like a thousand tokens of overlap. And so now I'm going to create or replace the table repair manuals as chunked. So again, I'm reading from that table I just created and I'm loading the chunked manuals into that. So if we go ahead and take a look at that now, you'll notice that I can see the numbers of the chunks and then the chunks of the actual text. Okay, perfect. So now let's use our first LLM or the vectorization engine that exists inside of Snowflake. So you'll notice I'm using Snowflake core text and then embed text today. This is the only embed text model um, available to you, but more coming. So I'm going to take this text, this raw text, and I'm going to vectorize it. So I'm going to create a numerical representation of all of this text. So again, I'm using that create or replace syntax inside of Snowflake to say, now I have my repair manuals. They're chunked and they're now vectorized. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. All right, so again, I have my file number, I have my chunk, my chunk text, my combined chunk text, and then my vectorization. So you'll notice that the numerical representation of that text is over here. So you can see that. It is a very large float. The next thing I want to do, so again, if we just keep scrolling through here, I want to invoke the LLM by giving it a prompt. So I'm saying, hey, my robot, my little AMR is not driving straight. How do I fix that? So what this will do, um, why I'm wrapping this in a user to time function instead of just allowing the user to type it, is this gives me a little bit better prompt engineering here, right? So you'll notice that I'm going to do a vector cosine distance. So I need to find the closest numerical match to my AMR is not driving straight and the closest vectorized match of inside of my repair manuals, how to resolve that, okay? So you can see, how do I troubleshoot this, AKA answer this question using this repair manual. That's where the rag comes in. So let's go ahead and create that. Perfect. Now let's, and this is also the first time that we used a large language model to answer a question. So you'll notice snowflake.cortex complete and I'm using the Mixtral 8x7b model to solve this problem. Snowflake has many different LLMs that you can choose from. We reviewed that a little bit earlier in the video and you can always replace that text with the model of your choice. So let's go ahead and validate that that all worked. So given the prompt that I said, my little AMR is not driving straight and then using the manuals that we just uploaded to that stage, loaded into a table, chunked them out and then vectorized them this is the answer. So it says, based on the provided repair text, here are some steps, right? So it talks about all the steps you can take to go through that repair manual to resolve that issue. Move on to step number five, which is the LLM generated repair logs. In the real world, you at your company, your organization, you're going to have actual repair logs of your machines that had maintenance or service done to them. And so you won't have to generate them. But since this is a demo or a quick start, I don't have actual repair logs. So we use some AI, some Snowflake AI, to generate some repair logs. So the first thing I need is a place to land them. So let's go ahead and create a table for those repair logs. That's fairly easy. And then I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, string of insert statements here, and I'm going to run that. And these are the AI-generated repair logs um, that we're going to insert. So let's go ahead and take a look at what those might look like. Great. So now you can see I have a plethora of um, repair logs for varying different sets of equipment. Again, we're using RAG, so we're going to do a little bit of prompt engineering. So we need to break up those repair logs into a formatted way 
so that I can get a better answer from our LLM. Perfect. Okay, let's look at what those are look like now that they're formatted. You'll notice that here's the problem reported, the resolution of the notes, and then I can go ahead and combine that like I have before. If I keep coming down, you know what we got to do next. We've got to turn them into numerical representations. So let's go ahead and vectorize this. So I've now vectorized them. Again, let's validate. Table looks very similar. I have my equipment, the problem recorded, the resolution, and now I have the numerical representation of that log. Okay, so let's do the exact same thing and let's wrap that all inside of a UDTF so I get the correct prompt engineering out of the system. Okay, so again, I'm using the Mixtral 8x7b and Snowflake Cortex Complete to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and do that. So the difference between a UDF and UDTF, a UDF will reply a single value and the UDTF is going to return an entire table. So let's go ahead and see if we did that correctly. So we're going to set our prompt to my little AMR is not driving straight. And let's go ahead and feed that repair logs, the prompt. So again, the first part, the first time that we invoke the LLM, I was using the repair manual supplied by the manufacturer. This time I'm using the repair log supplied by your maintenance technicians. And this is the real power of the solution. Using the company data that you already have and Snowflake, you're now able to use an LLM to process that company data to get better answers to your problems. So here we are again, and you'll notice it's a little bit different. So the repair log says, check the, uh, the nav screen. And this one says, mm, you know what? Check the wheel encoders to make sure that they're up to date. So you'll notice the repair logs and the repair manuals differ in what they offer, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, let's go ahead and combine both the repair logs and the um, equipment maintenance manuals. So let's go ahead and take the power of your company's repair logs. Let's combine it with the manual supplied by your equipment manufacturer or your vendor, and let's call three different LLMs. So inside our stacked results, we'll call complete. We're gonna call vector cosine distance. And then you'll notice this is the first time we're using cortex.summarize. So we're gonna go ahead and call the two different LLMs. We're gonna combine those contexts and then we're gonna ask cortex to summarize the answer because of course we don't wanna read the entire thing. So let's go ahead and create that UDF. Okay, it's done. So again, we're going to use that exact same prompt. Hey, my little AMR, it's not driving straight. Can you answer that question for me? So now we've taken all of the UDFs that uh, invoke LLMs. We've combined them into a single uh, user-defined function and then added the summarize feature. So you'll notice here, this is the very short and concise answer of how to make your little AMR drive straight. And let's create the Streamlit app. So if you remember earlier in the video, I explained that Streamlit is a GUI front end uh, Python package that you can use to visualize a lot of your data intensive apps inside of Snowflake. Today, we're going to use it to um, output visually the um, information from our LLMs and our repair maintenance uh, manuals. So we're going to go ahead over here, we'll come over here, and we're going to click on Streamlit. And then we're going to click Create New Streamlit App. Let's give it a better name. We do want to use LLM. We don't want to use this schema. We want to use the schema that we built all of our objects in. And we want to use the warehouse um, medium because that's the one we created for this little workshop. So let's go ahead and click create. It's going to drop you directly into that um, Streamlit app. And you notice that every brand new Streamlit app comes default already. So Snowflake supplies you with a little app that you can move see the, the slider bar interaction um, with your app and, and see how that goes. We, of course, aren't interested in anything here. So we're just gonna go ahead and select it all and delete it. And we'll scroll down here and we'll grab the source code for this app. You'll notice since that we put a lot of our logic in the UDFs, that this is, this is very few lines of code. It's so powerful, right? 
So we have 59 lines of code we're able to take and run this Streamlit app. And we have gone from 59 lines of code in a quick start to a fully functioning GUI app. So again, you'll notice my prompt is, hey, my little AMR, it's not driving straight. How do I troubleshoot this issue? I click submit and you'll know it's running up here in the top right corner. You can see the Streamlit um, progress icons moving across. So the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna go and look at my repair um, manuals and it's gonna generate a response from my repair manuals. The next thing it will do is it will look at my internal repair logs and generate some responses from the repair logs and then it will give me the combined insights. And that's where the power comes is the combined insights. I've taken the repair logs, which your company generates every day for your equipment, the repair manuals, which you can download or get from your equipment supplier vendor. And then we're going to go ahead and combine them. So based on what I asked for, which is my little AMRs not driving straight, it says using this PDF here, Check for any errors in the fleet manager. Confirm that all your emergency stop buttons are pulled out. And then down here, I just applied a little extra information here about the chunks and the scores, right? So this one has an 85% similarity score, um, 85.4. That's why it's above the 85.2. It's chunk number 64. So based on just the repair manuals alone, this is what the LLM is recommending we do. If we dump over here into the returnal, internal repair logs, you'll notice that it does give us a little bit different answers, but they're pretty similar. Here's some insights um, from those repair logs. And then if we come over here to the combined insights, we're taking both the manufacturer's best recommended course of action and your maintenance technician's tribal knowledge that they get on the floor in the manufacturing line every day on what should be done to repair your little robot. This demo was done with little self-driving robots. You could of course create this for any kind of equipment maintenance that you have on your manufacturing floor today. We're finished. So if you wanna clean up everything that we just did, all you have to do is drop database LLM that will drop the database you created, schema rag, as well as the internal stage, the files inside of it and your Streamlit application. I'm not gonna run that command right now because I have many different solutions inside of my LLM database, but this single command will drop or will erase everything that we've done today. So in conclusion, what did you learn? You learned how to use Snowflake Cortex to invoke LLMs that run on top of very large GPUs inside of your Snowflake security boundary with a single line of SQL. You learned how to use our open source Python libraries um, from the Snowflake Anaconda channel, including Snowpark, to take those PDFs and chunk them into digestible um, units of measurement that you can vectorize. You learned how to create Snowflake user-defined functions and user-defined table functions to package up parts of your code for usability and or readability. You were able to vectorize and or create a numerical representation of your text so that the LLMs could use it. And then on top of it, you created a very simple Streamlit application so that your users and your maintenance technicians could then take this app with them on an iPad or a laptop as they're sitting next to that piece of equipment running that repair scenario. Thanks for your time today.